The author Johanna Spiri, it's safe to say, is not as well known as her fictional creation Heidi. The little girl raised by her grandfather among the goats and flowers of the Swiss Alps. She has outlived Johanna by far, having become a globally famous character. Heidi's story has been translated into more than 70 languages, sold over 60 million copies, and been made into multiple films, animations, stage productions, and more. Heidi no longer belongs to Johanna Spiri, says literary professor Jean-Michel Vismer. She belongs to the whole world. She's the kind of heroine who eclipses her author. Well, this may be true. Heidi is a pretty big deal. But so was Johanna, and without her, there'd be no Heidi at all. So, what was she like, and what compelled her to write the story we love so well? Well, she was born Johanna Luisa Heuser in June of 1827 in the village of Herzl, which is in the canton of Zurich in the northeastern part of Switzerland. Now, this was before the Industrial Revolution, before cars or planes or fancy plumbing, so think rustic, but also refined. Johanna, nicknamed Hani, was fortunate to be raised in a home that was this great combination of rural alpine beauty, happy large family hubbub, and also the privileges of status and intellect. Her father was the beloved town doctor, her mother was a popular songwriter and poet, and the home they made for Johanna and her five siblings was sort of a bubbling cultural center full of books and music and people coming and going. The Hoisters, plus a couple of aunts and a grandma, all lived together, and her father had his small clinic right here in this house. And this was, of course, a beautiful way and place for Hani and her siblings to grow up. One of her sisters later recalled how Hani loved the sound of the wind and the fir trees so much that she would stop playing just to listen. And how they made friends with an old goat herd who gave them bread with fresh cheese and butter to eat at his hut. And of course the children had all sorts of games to play, hide and seek in the barn, capture the castle in the forest, dolls in a doll theater, and imagined all sorts of stories about the fairies and gnomes of local folklore. And all this time, growing inside young Hani were three things that would direct and affect her for the rest of her life. Her faith in God, her deep appreciation of nature, and her selfless concern for other people. She was educated at the village primary school, not the best experience for young Hani, where one of her teachers actually called her a dunce, and she really struggled to keep up her grades, even in drawing. She once turned in a picture with a big hole in the middle from all the erasing she'd done. But she got some extra tutoring, and she prevailed and went on to school about 20 miles away in Zurich before returning home to care for and teach her younger sisters. This is one of them standing up behind Johanna, and her mother is sitting beside her. Now and then, she'd spend delightful summers in the picturesque town of Mayenfeld in Switzerland's Rhine Valley, which would later become the setting for Heidi. Well, Johanna had plenty of friends in her hometown, but one became more important than all the others, a tall, slender student and family friend named Bernhard Schwery. And the two were married in 1852, when Johanna was 25. And together they moved to the hustling, bustling city of Zurich. Bernhard became an attorney, and Johanna gave birth to a son, which was wonderful. But she deeply missed the countryside. Like Heidi, she became homesick for her beloved alpine meadows. She was struggling with depression, felt oppressed by city life, and was saddened by the suffering of soldiers she saw returning from war. So she began to write. And through her books, she was able to not only bring the countryside closer and express her beliefs about faith and life, but she was also able to donate the proceeds of her books to help hurting veterans and to use her free time to volunteer with the newly formed Red Cross. For the most part, she wrote for children and for those who love children, bringing to her stories a unique understanding of how young people think, feel, and experience the world. But it wasn't until she was 54, after completing several lesser-known works, that she wrote, in German, the two volumes that would become Heidi. And you can probably guess that the story of Heidi is a little bit about Johanna herself, but it's also possibly based on a little girl she had known in Mayenfeld named Maya. And included in the mix is a good deal of old Swiss folklore about the healing powers of the countryside. All of these things were part of the story of Heidi. And the book was a hit from the very beginning. 
Immediately it was translated into other languages and sold 13 editions over the next decade. But sadly, Johann didn't have long to enjoy that success because just a few years later in 1884, she lost both her husband and her son to illness. Left on her own and of course grieving, she poured herself into writing and helping others. Before her death in 1901, at age 74, she completed more than 50 stories, including 49 children's books. And so today, this woman who preferred to avoid the spotlight and let her books speak for her, has been awarded a commemorative coin, a stamp in her honor, and more than one museum dedicated to her memory and her stories. Even so, if you were to visit this beautiful village called Heidedorf in Mainfeld today, you might think Johanna has been eclipsed by her creation. You might be tempted to think it's Heidi who is the real person, not Johanna. You can tour Heidi's Alp Cottage. You can see her little bed and pet her goats. And people come from all around the globe to do just that. But we still see you, Johanna Spiri. We see your kindness, your understanding of children, your empathy and skill. And we say thank you for sharing not just Heidi, but your life and your unique experience of the world with us. Mm -hmm.